Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to the RTDS Technologies User Spotlight Series. This is week number 10. Yet again, I'm Katie Sidwell, and I'm here as your host and moderator from RTDS Technologies as I take you through two more exciting user presentations regarding usage of the real-time digital simulator and hardware in the loop testing in novel applications. This is our second last week of the User Spotlight series, and it's been really great to see the level of engagement and participation from our audience. So thanks so much, whether you're joining us for the first time or whether you've been with us along the way. I want to first direct your attention to the top left corner of the webinar platform where you'll see the Q&A feature. Please feel free to submit your questions throughout the presentations. Our presenters will be online and able to answer your questions as they come in. And then at the end of both presentations, we will do a live discussion uh, of some of your questions. So keep them coming. And in the bottom right hand area, you'll see the chat feature. Please feel free to say hello, introduce yourself. Not quite the same as our users group meeting, but this will have to do for now. You can check out the handouts widget. It should be close to the bottom left of the webinar platform, or you can access it through your icon toolbar at the bottom of the screen, clicking on the paper icon. And the handouts area has the slide decks for both of today's presentations. So you can feel free to download those at your leisure. As usual, this session will be available on demand after the fact, which means you can log in using your existing credentials on the RTDS website, or uh, you can recommend this to a colleague who can register for the session after the fact and log in to view this session and download the slides. And if you're viewing on demand, you can still submit questions via the Q&A feature and they'll be answered by email. Okay, we have two exciting utility or system operation perspective uh, presentations today from RTDS users. So without further ado, I'm happy to introduce our first presenters, Benjamin Marshall and Bharath Ponalagan from the National HVDC Centre in Great Britain. As the HVDC Technical Manager, Ben Marshall oversees the team of simulation engineers undertaking detailed HVDC simulation studies in real time using vendor-supplied replica hardware to understand multi-in-feed, multi-terminal, and multi-vendor HVDC operation and interactions for real schemes in Great Britain, interpreting the results to gain insights to improve the design and operation of HVDC schemes. Ben previously has had a 23-year-long and varied career within National Grid with a broad range of experience, particularly with respect to the analysis of the operation and design of the AC and DC transmission systems. He has expertise in both offline and real-time EMT simulation and in modeling of converters across battery, solar, wind, and HVDC systems. He's developed deep technical skills relating to dynamic stability of power systems and the performance specification of HVDC converters. Within the ESO, Ben advised on the specification, validation, and modeling of new HVDC connections supporting the compliance connection planning and requirements, and provided technical leadership on AC and DC control systems, system operability, smart grids, and power system simulation, leading complex power system studies. As a simulation engineer, Bharath Ponalagan is responsible to lead research engagement toward innovative, leading protection and interaction studies, and develop models for power electronic devices within the GB grid. He also provides his expertise to support SHE transmission by modeling the SSE grid assets in real time, using RSCAD to de-risk the integration of future and present HVDC and FACTS devices within the SSC's transmission system. Barath brings a manufacturer's perspective. Having been a lead engineer with GE and a team manager with ABB, he has expertise on the practical design of control and protection for HVDC projects. He possesses professional experience of around 13 years working in various international power system projects in multiple roles, including technical lead, team management, and project management. He has around nine years of exclusive in-depth experience in HVDC, working with two of the major HVDC manufacturers. Having worked in several LCC and VSC projects, he has in-depth knowledge in designing, developing, testing HVDC control and protection systems and performing complex dynamic performance studies for HVDC converters. Please welcome Benjamin Marshall and Bharath Ponalagan presenting De-Risking the Deployment of HVDC Projects at the National HVDC Center. 
Hello and welcome to the RTDS Spotlight Series uh, presentation from the National HVDC Centre from myself, Ben Marshall and Baruch Penalgan. Uh, so just to uh, explain what we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk a little bit about an overview about what the HVDC Centre is, um, why RTDS is so important and some of the end conclusions of how it may be used in the future. And then we'll move on to a number of projects that we've been working on and take you through some of the practical applications of our RTDS uh, software and uh, the importance of EMT in real uh, activities that the centre holds. So what is the centre? Well, as we say at the top left here, the, the, the centre is an Ofgen funded uh, simulation and training entity which is available uh, to support all GB, HVDC and indeed uh, other fax device uh, schemes as may be initiated by developers or by the TOs who are partners in the centre as is the electricity system operator. Uh, the centre is run and owned by uh, SSE within uh, Scottish and Southern Energy Networks uh, but works uh, together with National Grid Electricity Transmission, uh, Scottish Power Energy Networks and National Grid ESO uh, in de-risking the integration of converter technology within the GV system. We offer a range of tools uh, including RTDS but also extending to other EMT platforms you may be familiar with such as PSCAD and indeed a number of RMS uh, platforms such as PSSE and Dix Island. Uh, we also look at uh, via collaboration uh, with uh, facilities such as uh, the uh, individual TOs, but also the organisations like Seagray and EPRI, um, advancing the management of risks um, that involves developing new techniques for analysis and also developing uh, new frameworks for standards and new specifications for equipment that the TOs and others may seek to install. Um, we also support a, a range of training, both in terms of the analytics, but also the control of HVDC systems. And uh, we also conduct uh, research ourselves uh, to, to be on the cutting edge of understanding both the risks and indeed, again, the techniques and processes that we need to enable in order to facilitate a, a net zero future of higher converter penetration and that involves a range, a range of solutions such as um, disseminating work which is uh, initial sort of test bed work through to uh, effectively prototyping new tools. So if we sort of into uh, what's happening in GV well, currently in GB, there's uh, eight gigs of HVDC, which are manifest as the largest converters on our, our network. Those are point-to-point -point connections. Um, however, um, over time, by 2019, uh, we had a few additional point-to-point -point connections, which were overlaid on the GB system, um, known as bootstraps, parallel links, very similar to uh, arrangements in Germany and in other places such as Canada, where uh, a range of both uh, current source and voltage source converters are connected into the GB system. So that drives uh, new and interesting challenges, particularly as some of them are relatively close to existing converters or indeed other fax devices. Moving forward, we see a total of 45 gigs of additional converter technology landing on the GB system and that ranges from uh, point to points very similar to as we have areas of congested point to points areas of parallel HVDC many of those integrated with our offshore developments as you see in items 31 and 34 on the east coast of GB um, we also have multi-terminal arrangements taking place you can see eight which is a connection up to Shetland but a number of the offshore developments will be multi-terminal in the future also. And there's also links between GB and Ireland, North Ireland and uh, continental Europe, meaning we're very heavily intertwined uh, with the rest of the network. And you can see in red, some of the latter links include additional reinforcements of the Anglo-Scottish link to complement a, a, a line commutated converter control solution on the west coast of Scotland. This is not a unique picture within GB. Beyond GB, uh, within the 
uh, European context, uh, a number of HVDC connected wind farms are being enabled. Uh, the inserts there showing the picture on the uh, North German and Netherlands coast. There's equally a, a picture of extensive developments occurring within the North Sea, which uh, could give rise to meshed infrastructure within the North Sea itself. And we also have extensive interconnections between the Baltic states and continental Europe, which may also include interconnection with offshore wind. You can see some of those north of Poland. So it's a, it's a developing picture of very large converters connecting in. Uh, the, the fundamental considerations with any converter project is clarity uh, derived from understanding the functions of an interconnector and also understanding the capabilities of that interconnector to deliver um, a range of capabilities such as uh, system services from bilateral agreement definition or GRICO definition that could be, be fault in feeds. It will involve some limitations on uh, power quality relating to harmonics and uh, MPS and other aspects of uh, unclear behavior uh, related to the measurement control of those converters and their performance. And they'll have certain requirements regarding right through performance, fault in feed, and potentially in the future even inertia uh, that are part of the considerations of the process. And that every project runs through um, a development life span which starts with feasibility work, from planning work and uh, base and detailed design work, moving forward into factory tests and into commissioning. Now across that, uh, it's worth saying that's just one development picture. You're going to have a number of projects happening at the same time, all at different stages. And when you're trying to manage de-risking, there's, there's one challenge of managing uh, the understanding of the effect of one converter on a network, which requires not only a, a complete picture of that converter, but also a complete picture of the network it's being integrated into. But if you've got a number of projects going through these sorts of life cycles, then it's also important that you can integrate in their technology, either in a model or as a physical replica control device. And that's where our, the flexibility of RTDS comes into its own. Not only is it capable of integrating in hardware and also integrating in very detailed models of converters, but equally because it's not restricted by the time limitations of the complexity of the models, uh, different time steps of compilers, and um, different levels of, of detail of network being simulated. Um, it does not have the same sort of simulation challenges that uh, you might find in other offline EMT packages it, it, within a real-time setting, literally one second is one second. And so you can carry out a lot of simulations very quickly and very flexibly change your initial conditions. So you have the ability to enhance the factory test environment by duplicating it to a large extent and then amplifying it by conducting a wider range of operational studies on a credible network. Why, why is this really important? Well, fundamentally, um, we're, we're seeing a new network analysis paradigm developing here. We have the challenges of hidden models, which was exemplified in the South Australian experience, but in many other ex experiences of late where there are elements of the model which are occurring within the black boxed IP of any converter solution, which are critical to network resilience. And those are both uh, performances in integration with the network, but also in integration with other devices. So it's very important whether it be a multiple fault ride through resilience or a resilience of the PLL to track a, a given level of disturbance or an over voltage or an overcurrent uh, protection that could occur at a, at a given point in time, it's very important to be integrating devices together with comparable levels of detail and to understand, if not the, the details, the layers of control within a model, understand the facets of that model so that you can describe an analysis solution within it. So that's the challenge that we're faced with. And what we'll show you now is a few of the projects that we've been working on and how we unpeel that particular onion and overcome some of the IP challenges within combining different devices and yet uh, are able to do the integration of solutions. So we, we would like to see 
uh, I guess RTDS um, technologies working with us uh, towards a number of these sorts of challenges as we go forward. Um, we have sh seen that RTDS is a technology that's used commonly for testing and uh, in fact we're not aware of, of us using alternative devices for fat testing. So as, as I mentioned earlier we are emulating that fat test environment and we've shown with the uh, ABB uh, replicas of Cavenets Murray and Shetland that we can both complement and amplify the commissioning process of a, a practical link. We've demonstrated within the promotion project that we can identify solutions for uh, relays and also integrate in multi-vendor solutions for protection relays within the DC meshed system and identify their work. And perhaps a little mention of AC protection relays, which uh, would seem an unusual area to mention, but I will. Um, AC protection relays each uh, have their own algorithms to determine uh, both uh, noise and sort of uh, areas of potential maloperation to avoid and equally determine from a polar impedance behaviour and a range of other behaviours depending on the relay um, how to trigger in response to a given fault condition. Uh, that's important for both the speed uh, of the relay's operation in protecting the AC system but also in discriminating between protected areas of the AC system. Now those relays uh, and their algorithms are again IP, so again it's not clear what is actually within that uh, code and if you pick up a, a model off the shelf in any offline program you won't have all of that detail. If you integrate in the hardware and you are bringing it together with the fault in feed then you can understand the relays. Now in, in, the, pra in the past you used to do something like an injection into those relays but as the world becomes more converter dominated, the converter behavior is more chaotic. And as a result of that, you need to understand what the relays are actually going to see and how they respond. And that in turn actually informs how the converters respond to the fault. So it's very a very important developing area to ensure that protection is operating appropriately in a converter dominated world where quite easily without uh, the, a given level of analysis, you could be in a situation where your protection relays either don't work or work very uh, much delayed and so that can lead to the stabilizing uh, of converters and indeed conventional machines through slow protection clearance times so hopefully that gives you a bit of an introduction and now over to baraf to talk about the project thank you ben thank you for providing with the overview and the summary so i am barat i'm a simulation engineer working at the National HVDC Center. Today I'm going to provide you with an overview of some of the projects at the National HVDC Center and also the application of RTDS in those projects. The first project that I'm going to provide an overview is Phaser Point. This Phaser Point project is a National Innovation Allowance Funded project where the main project partners are SSEN, GE, and the National HVDC Center. This project mainly aims to estimate the system strength using GE's VAMPAC technology, which is a combination of GE's phaser point wide area monitoring system and phaser, con phaser controller. As part of this project, both the phaser point wide area monitoring system and the phaser controller would be tested using RTDS real-time simulator and the overview of the system can be seen in the right. So the main components of this setup are GE's phaser point wide area monitoring system, uh, GE's phaser controller, RTDS, physical PMUs and the CMS HVDC control and protection replica. And also you can see the various protocols and communication paths that's, that are being used for this setup. Mainly the PMUs would communicate with the phaser point wide area controller using IEEE C37118 protocol, while the phaser controller communicates with the RTDS using IEC61850 protocol. And also you can see that all the components are being time synchronized using an centralized GPS clock using various time synchronizing protocols. 
This hardware setup would be tested along with the model of North of Scotland transmission network. The AC side of this transmission network would be fully modeled in RSCAT, while the HVDC CM link would be a combination of RSCAT model and physical HVDC control and protection replica provided by the manufacturer. The physical PMU would get the measurement from the model using a combination of GTAO card and power amplifier. This measured measurements would be further transmitted to GE's phase point wide area monitoring system using IEEE C37.118 protocol. While the simulated RSCAT PMU would directly relay the information to GE's phase point wide area monitoring system using the same IEEE C37.118 protocol. These measurements from various points in the network could be used by GE's phaser controller to estimate the system strength. This estimated system strength would be used to create a digital signal, which would further inform the HVDC control and protection of CM to operate on the right mode, thus fulfilling the objective of this project. The next project which I will be discussing with you is Distributed Restart. Distributed Restart is a national innovation competition funded project. The main project partners of this project are National Grid Electricity System Operator, Scottish Power Energy Networks, and TNEA Power System Consultant. The main aim of this project is to use distributed energy resources to restart a blacked out network. As a part of this project, various power system studies to simulate various restoration scenarios, transformer energization conditions, and load pickups would be studied. Along with that, performance of various protection system and performance of anchor generator would be studied and tested. Also as part of this project, an innovative distributed wide area controller would be developed, which would be further used in live field triad, which is the final deliverable of this project. As part of the distributed restart project, the National HVDC Center would develop the detailed model of Chapel Cross distribution network. To develop this model in RSCAD, the PSCAD model would be imported into RSCAD using the PSCAD import tool that's available in the RSCAD. Once imported, this model would be validated against the PSCAD model. Once the validation is complete, further enhancement to this RSCAD model would be done by adding more detailed control and protection for the anchor generator. Also, this model would be further enhanced by adding the details of nearby network areas thereby improving the flexibility and usability of this RSCAD network model. Once the model is developed, several studies to simulate various energization scenarios of transformers and circuit would be performed. And key outcomes from these uh, studies would be shared to the stakeholders. Once the studies are complete, HIL studies that would study the critical generator protection of the anchor generator using the real physical generator protection release would be performed. Also, as a next step, the innovative distributed wide area controller that would be developed as part of this project would be, uh, would be tested along with the developed distributed distributed distribution network. This would uh, de-risk the final live trials that would be performed as part of this project. The final project that I, I would be sharing with you is Protection Test Bench. The Protection Test Bench project is part of the National HVDC Center's Innovation and Research Program for the year 2020. This project is mainly done by the University of Strathclyde, along with the partnership of the National HVDC Center and its stakeholders. 
The main aim of this project is to develop an RTDES test bench that could be used to test the effect of converters, HVDC converters, synchronous condensers, and non-synchronous generator on AC protection. You can see the overview of the test bench in the diagram on the right. The main components of this test setup are the MMC converter, synchronous condenser, voltage sources, the AC line, its loads, and the non-synchronous generator, which are all modeled in RSCAD. The physical components of this test bench are GTAO card, GTFPI card, the power amplifier, and the physical relay for which the protection performance is assessed. This RTDS protection test bench is fully flexible to adjust the modes of operation and the level of contribution from various key components that is embedded in this test bench. This allows the user to simulate various scenarios that one can face in a real life power system. As an example, a distance protection relay was tested against this test bench. And the results for the same can be seen in the plots, which is shown in the right. As the system strength reduces and the level of uh, contribution from the HVDC converter, synchronous condenser, and the non synchronous generation is changed, the behavior of the impedance of the system during the fall changes widely. This can be seen in the polar impedance plot at the bottom of the picture. Uh, this, this change in behavior would cause various critical challenges for the distance protection relay. These challenges can be slower detection of fault or detection of fault in the wrong zone or not detecting the fault at all. Similar scenarios can be uh, simulated and studied uh, to de-risk the future integration of the HVDC and non-synchronous generation in the GB network, thus, thus de-risking the future integration of uh, any HVDC project. Thank you for listening. Please post any of your questions. Either myself or Ben would be answering the same. Excellent. Thank you, Ben and Bharath, for that presentation. Um, if anyone's interested in some more details, particularly from the RTDS side on HVDC modeling, there is a joint webinar uh, that we did earlier this year between the National HVDC Center in Great Britain and RTDS Technologies. And if you Google RTDS uh, National HVDC Center webinar, you can uh, access that online as well. Moving on to our second presentation, I'm happy to introduce Chun Fang from Manitoba Hydro. Chen received his MSc degree and BSc degree with honors in electrical engineering in 2017 and 2010, respectively, from University of Manitoba, Canada. He has over 11 years of working experience in the utility sector and assumed many professional roles with various technical and mentorship capacities. Currently, Chen is working as AC HVDC Control Studies Engineer at Manitoba Hydro. In the last six years, He's been a key contributor to the Nelson River Bipole 3 HVDC project, including the design and specification reviews, factory acceptance test, witness, and on-site commissioning. Being the lead engineer, he's helped deliver state-of-the-art controlled switching technology in the first ever HVDC application. His current interests are in the area of HVDC and facts technologies and modeling, real-time hardware in the loop applications, and probabilistic asset strategy developments. Please welcome Chen Fang with his presentation, De-Risking Manitoba Hydro's Power Grid Transformation with Manitoba Hydro's Real-Time Simulation Center. Thank you kindly, Katie, for the intro. Hello and welcome. My name is Chen Fang. Currently, I work as the HVDC and AC Control Studies Engineer at Manitoba Hydro and serve as the Lead Engineer at Manitoba Hydro Real-Time Simulation Center. Today, I would like to share with you all how leverageable cutting-edge technology of RTDS is a foundational to manual biogeo power grid transition and transformation journey. Before we embark on this journey, studies of space missions by NASA demonstrated how cost of change increase exponentially 
just to fix a simple problem as the problem matures its life cycle. One cost you need to prevent, tend to correct, hundred or more when a mission fails. The conscious action is to identify and rectify problems early. As a result, NASA developed a mission simulation facility to manage risk proactively. Equally as important as NASA space missions, Mandu Biojo is fully committed to safely, reliably, and sustainably serve our customers while responsibly investing in power grid of the future. The question is how to preemptively assess the impact of complex technologies prior to deployment in power grid and seize value opportunities in the ever evolving power system landscape. Being a part of an integrated resource planning division and strategy portfolio, State of Art Mandrup Hydro Real Time Simulation Center presents an established and a unique value proposition to de risk planning, engineering, delivery, and sustainment of current and emerging technology assets in Mandrup Hydro power grid transformation. Whereas traditional tools and process may be inadequate to address the challenges. Mandrup Hydro Headquartered in Winnipeg, Manitoba, is one of the largest integrated electricity and natural gas utilities in Canada. As a provincial crown corporation owned by the province of Manitoba, Manitoba Hydro serves over 580,000 electricity and 280,000 gas customers, nearly all of 5,700 megawatt clean and renewable generation is produced at 15 hydroelectric generating stations. In addition to energy sales agreements with the U.S. utilities, Mandrup Hydro is a participant with the Mid-Continent Independent System Operator, MISO, which provides an opportunity to buy and sell energy in one of the largest electric energy markets in North America. In a typical year, up to 25% of Mandrup Hydro production is um, exported to U.S. through our transmission internet connections. Given our northern um, climates and high uh, altitude. Our load peaks uh, during the winter time at about 40, 47, 50 megawatts uh, and get transmitted through uh, about 40, uh, 14,000 kilometers of transmission infrastructures. Endobiogeo transmission facility has been developed and uh, operated as an integrated system with the bulk energy system being the three LCC H HVDC transmission lines namely BIPO-1, BIPO-2, and BIPO-3, commonly known as the Nielsen River HVDC system. Vintage BIPO-1 and 2 originate in the north um, from Radisson and Hande rectifier stations, respectively, share the same interlake corridor and terminate about 900 km away at a Dorsey Inverter Station in the south. The newly inaugurated BIPO-3 HVDC with classic LCC technology traverses 1,400 km in a west corridor strategically separated from the Interlake Corridor. It originates from a Kumatanuka rectifier station in the north and terminates at a real inverter station in the south. Together, BIPO-1, 2, and 3 transmit about 80% of Mandu Baju's annual energy portfolio from its northern hydro stations on the uh, North uh, Nielsen River to south load centers and the export markets. The addition of BIPO 3 HVDC to the ex existing BIPO 1 and 2 HVDC system features an electrically coupled 3 BIPO mud egress and mud infeed topology. In the north, three rectifier stations egress from the northern collector system where heavy concentration of hydroelectric generation is present. In the south, three inverter stations feed into a common interconnected AC system with a relatively weak strength in short circuit capacity and system inertia. This multi egress and multi infeed topology creates a complex operating environment and requires a judiciously coordinated HVDC recovery strategy to prevent potential adverse interactions. In alignment with the corporation priorities, Mandu Bahaju Real Time Simulation Center, or MHRC in short, was established in 2013 as an essential planning and delivery framework to support the continuity of Mandu Bahaju's complex high voltage direct current HVDC system. People, talent at the Integrated Resource Planning Division within Mandu Bahaju 
leveraging expertise and knowledge to maximize the business value of MHRC cutting-edge technology tools and to serve and advise all Mandupaijo project partners. At MHRC, people talented with great wealth of expertise and diverse capabilities are undeniably our core asset. This talent pool actively stays informed of the current and evolving industry insight and collectively functions as the center of expertise that specializes in de-risking planning and delivery of complex power system technology solutions. Modern power system control and protection technologies are highly complex and sophisticated. Hidden, hidden design flaws, implementation errors, hardware defects, and adverse interactions with the power system are examples that are not easily nor readily revealed by conventional processes that, but impose great risk to secure operation of our power grid. The heart of MHRC technology asset is the RTS fleet. Um, a fleet of uh, 14 RTS uh, PP5 uh, racks and uh, two latest generation uh, normal core chassis, each with a 10 cores fully licensed, represent one of the largest RTS installation due to, the, again, the complex nature of MH Mandubahajo HVDC system operating environment. Replica fleets is comprised of uh, vintage pipe 1 and 2. HVDC uh, valve group control replicas and a full set of uh, BIPO3 HVDC control and protection replicas, along with HVDC AC supporting equipment control replicas such as uh, synchronized condenser, exciter uh, control, joint bar control, um, JVC PLCs, remedial action schemes PLCs, uh, and uh, etc. Here's an overview of the largest scale multi infeed HPTC simulation mo uh, model with the BIPO3 control and protection hardware replica in the loop that we had uh, internally developed and successfully, successfully leveraged in the BIPO3 HPTC commissioning to ensure a secure and reliable integration into the ex existing Mandubahajo HPTC system. This model includes highly granular and uh, a faithful representation of northern generating stations with the synchronized machines, frequency dependent AC transmission network, HVDC BIPO 1 and 2 controls derived from the original analog circuit board analysis uh, done about, uh, um, I guess, uh, about 40 years ago, reduced southern uh, AC network representation, HVDC synchronized controls uh, with exciters, um, interconnections pertinent pertinent U.S. power system and two currency-based AC dynamic equivalents representing the two prominent inter-area modes, together with the special protection schemes, remedy action schemes, and the conventional protection schemes as well. Given the complexity of this simulation, some tools were developed internally to reduce the RTDS computation requirement um, to automate the start, uh, start and stop sequence and uh, to posture the power flow using the actual Mandubahajo uh, system operating uh, data as well. Conventionally, power flow preparation of a large-scale RTS simulation model uh, is time-consuming and non, uh, in a very non-systematic way. Realizing this uh, complexity as well as the need to seamlessly posture the power flow of our large-scale simulation model, we internally developed a high-fidelity tool in Python that would uh, automate the power flow scenario adjustment with using either near real time uh, and all historical system operating uh, data acquired from a Mandarin Hydro Central opera Operation Repository Pi data servers within minutes. This tool recognizes the uh, model components and uh, changes the attribute accordingly and uh, adjust the network topologies, equipment uh, status. Uh, export uh, transform levels, machine uh, settings, transformer, OLTC um, positions, AC filter, HVDC AC filter setters, HVDC uh, transfer um, and power loads, as well as uh, load profiles and uh, etc. It's produced about I mean, a very acceptable error within 5 to 8% compared to the operating data acquired from uh, Manu Baijiu 
Pi data server. It's particularly useful for post-mortem forensic analysis for con control and protection missile operations and uh, expedite the real-time simulation power flow posturing process uh, prior to uh, any imminent on-site commissioning. Since its inception in 2013, MHRC collaborated with many Mandupa Hydro project partners in business critical projects and celebrated a stellar record of success story, stories, notably real to Forbes uh, 500 kb series of com compensated uh, interconnection lines, successfully enabled a crucial uh, single port tubing reclo reclosing, auto reclosing schemes 34 years after its original construction due to its complexity, allowing a fast, reliable, and secure and safe restoration of one of our key market access. In the past, line outages took hours, if not a day, uh, to restore, of which are important to Mandubahaju's physical strength and secure operation. World first HVDC POW controller uh, with the consideration uh, for uh, remnants of flux of uh, commodore transformers. Uh, de risk uh, emerging as smart technology uh, that was uh, instrumental for the successful adaptation for the world first HVDC commodore transformer application. Uh, that's, I mean, estimate the residual uh, remnants of flux on the transformer course of uh, two parallel operating commodore transformers switched by a single uh, circuit breaker. Uh, yield substantial asset life cycle cost reduction and uh, benefits over five minutes savings. In the past, when AC uh, circuit breakers uh, maintenance intervals was about 500 to 750 uh, intervals. Now with this uh, smart technology, the maintenance uh, intervals has uh, been um, reduced or delayed um, to 1500 uh, operations to 2000 operations effectively. And uh, this initiative earned Mandu Pajo the prestigious CEA Center of Excellence uh, Award for Innovation. BIPO 3 HVDC commissioning significantly reduced the commissioning schedule by approximately three months and uh, cost, uh, outage cost facilitated a fast and secure integration to the existing complex Mandu Pajo HVDC system, otherwise control budget and uh, schedule would likely be in jeopardy. One of the recent uh, um, deployment of uh, Manitoba to Minnesota transmission project effectively de risk uh, the critical yet complex protection schemes, otherwise uh, the T-line cannot safely energize nor get protected. Secure uh, key technical uh, buy-ins from uh, our enterprise partner Minnesota Power and strengthen cooperation reputation by demonstrating our strong technical capabilities and collaboration permitted a fast and secure uh, market access from the first day of operation. Given the many challenging design elements uh, within this project, investigation of, uh, um, of this uh, series compensated uh, Manitoba to Minnesota uh, transmission line protection um, coordination is only considered possible by the RTDS testing. This line is designed with a 60% uh, series compensation and uh, initially there was a, a concern, a legitimate concern of a high circuit breaker transient recovery voltage, TRV, um, due to the potential delayed clar uh, clearing, uh, given the presence of a very, very high degree of a serious compensation, which uh, ultimately uh, may give rise to the missing current zero crossing. And uh, by implementing detailed and granular uh, circuit breaker uh, contact uh, operation delays as well as um, all the detailed com um, communication delays we were able to confirm the TRV rating uh, throughout this uh, project and also um, special control algorithm for bypass uh, has been developed by ABB as one of the world first to bypass the series cap I mean uh, in a very fast I mean fashion as a, another remedy to uh, reduce the TRV stress on our circuit breaker. So many of these challenging design elements made a protection coordination using the conventional schemes uh, very difficult. Um, by leveraging RTDS, I mean, 
we were able to call, uh, create and uh, validate some of the solutions uh, using uh, rather con unconventional elements such as uh, directional overcurrents as well as the line differential elements in the conjunction with the line distance elements given the time uh, constraint within today's uh, webinar so I'm not gonna in go into too much details about this uh, project um, definitely at a perhaps a later stage and uh, along with many other success stories uh, including one of the recently constructed a uh, uh, Wax Quantum Shimmy Station project for the Black Start controller testing as well as I mean some uh, joint load control uh, testing as well. Conservatively by 2020 MHRC has created over seven million dollars saving or about 200 percent return on capital for MHRC. It is expected to generate over 17 million savings or 400 return on capital by year 2030. As mental biogeo undergoes transition to modernize and further improve uh, power grid for greater re reliability, security, and sa safe and economic oper uh, operations, mental biogeo um, real-time simulation center remains committed to our project partners every step along the way from project planning to delivery either for asset creation and or uh, sustainment project. Recently, we have helped them in uh, um, de-risking the deployment of uh, a, an in-house designed uh, phase shifter power flow controller for one of uh, the phase shifter transformers we have recently um, integrated into our system. This uh, um, remedy this remedy uh, action scheme was designed to automatically regulate the phase of uh, two phase transf shift transformers to prevent overloading of uh, one of the 230 kV interconnection lines to US following selected uh, contingencies and uh, we were able to uh, validate as well as uh, verify the performance uh, for this in-house design uh, RAS scheme and currently we are working on the HVDC reduction control Remedial action scheme um, as part of uh, the MMTP Manitoba to Minnesota to Minnesota transmission planning project. Um, this uh, RS is uh, it's designed to uh, prevent um, Manitoba to US 230 kV interconnections overloading um, as a result of any 500 kV interconnection related I mean contingencies and losses. Uh, this uh, internal design. Um, was meant to quickly allocate a power reduction on money in feed HBDC system based on the uh, pre contingency 500 kV uh, power transfers to um, enhance the power uh, our power system stabilities again and also to prevent any potential overloadings on the remaining 230 kV interconnection lines uh, remains in service. Also our team is uh, very actively um, developing the so-called BIPOL3 conception model ever since the uh, commissioning as well as integration of BIPOL3 uh, we have initiated an in-house development of a detailed BIPOL3 control and protection model uh, to represent the conceptual philosophy of BIPOL3 um, as well as its uh, digital control implementation uh, approach we have uh, um, by now fully developed uh, and validated such a model in the offline PSCADA EM TDC program and uh, we are currently uh, undertaking the developments in RTDS in collaboration with uh, RTDS Technologies Limited. They have uh, uh, kindly basically uh, implemented some of the digital um, digital filter well, digital uh, digital filtering uh, components that are necessary for our RTS model developments and also we are continuously uh, improving and enhancing our large-scale money feed simulation model by expanding our model to fully represent the manual hydro power system uh, 115 kV and above and uh, we are also developing um, and identifying some currency based AC equivalent for uh, ex for neighboring jurisdictions, I mean, and uh, exploring the option of for EMT PSCAD to uh, uh, 
PSCC dynamic trends and core simulation as well. While fully committed to our current project, here's how MHRC will help de risking our long term power grid transformation in initiatives. In preparation meant by Geo Real Time Simulation Center, or MHRC, has developed a long term strategic action plan to reach out and team up with project partners within the corporation um, from different uh, business units such as uh, asset planning and delivery operations, digital transformation, customer solutions, and uh, experiences to ready manual hydro for the power grid of the future by de-risking technological frontiers. So in consideration of our corporation strategies and uh, industry insights, part of our innovation portfolio covers a diverse range of value applications in decentralization, decarbonization, digitalization, uh, smart grid, power grid uh, electronics, operation and maintenance. As a part of our outreach campaign, we had initiated discussions with uh, project stakeholders on digital substation, cybersecurity assessment, system impact assessment. While our project partners uh, at one of the uh, departments was evaluating and searching for solutions to test the emerging traveling wave relay technology early this year, pardon me, uh, we attended to the, their needs with a more favorable and economical options by leveraging RTDS, uh, our RTDS fleet than the much more um, expensive yet a single purpose option offered by the manufacturer. In terms of uh, DERs distributed energy resources, and they are currently more than 190 installations of uh, various sizes across the province. Um, it comes down to the energy market uh, policies as well as the reg regulatory uh, incentives as well. Mandu Pajo is actively investing in smart metering infrastructures uh, to permit and facilitate uh, bi-directional uh, bi um, metering uh, schemes as well. So through active participation in global engineering com communities and uh, events like the one today, um, MHRC stay, stays informed of the current as well as the future trend in the power system industry. So thinking globally but acting locally. Mandu Bahaju Real-Time Simulation Center has been proactively engaging with the existing and uh, new um, project partners within the corporation as part of our outreach campaign to support a corporate corporation a strategy, a strategic vision for greater synergy and value. So Mandu Bahaju Real-Time Simulation Center, MHRC, with RTDS technology has been foundational to de-risk the technology technological elements of Mandrup Hydro power grid modernization and a leverageable asset to the transformation of Mandrup Hydro power grid of the future. So with that, with that, I would like to thank you for your interest. Now I will be more than happy, happy to answer any of the questions you may have or elaborate on anything that I may have present today. Thank you. Okay, um, it sounds like we're having some uh, technical issues right now. Um, I'm not usually one to do the Q&A, but I will try to take this over for Katie. Um, we had one question here. 
Uh, doing HIL studies with the actual replica controls is obviously the gold standard, but do either of today's presenters do studies using vendor supplied simulation models of their controllers to verify these against the actual replica controls so that the simulation models can be used for some studies where you may not want to handle the complexity that comes with having actual hardware in the loop. So, so I guess the, the, the answer is yes uh, for the HVDC Centre. We have in some cases received open models and been able to translate those into RSCAD and use those to reflect devices. But I, I guess I would pose the question back as simplify what? Um, how would you, for example, simplify the code within an, a, a smart iPhone? Okay, thank you for that. Um, would anybody else like to address that question before we move on to another one? Just to answer, uh, just to add on to what Ben already suggested. Yeah, we have done some uh, for some of the vendor supplied uh, models uh, verification between <clears throat> the real uh, hardware performance and the PSCAD model perform offline model performance. Uh, we had found that it's uh, almost like 99% similar uh, for particular cases for which the offline model was desi designed, but uh, it won't match the performance for all the cases or all the scenarios <clears throat> which the real hardware would do. So it depends on what type of studies you would like yeah. to perform in with that model, offline model, which you are going to do. And uh, so, and, and the functionality available in the offline model. So, 100% the offline model is not 100% equal to the real hardware. The key thing here, Katie, is because we can't see the control structure, we, we can't make appropriate assumptions for each sort of study. So, knowing a model is fit for all purposes is very unlikely you need to be confident that you've got a complete representation which is fit for the purpose you intend to use it for. That's that's something you can struggle to do outside of hardware in the loop or using a real device. Yes, so, so, so it, it's, it's almost unlikely to match one-to-one -one performance for the real hardware in the offline model. Great, thank you, that's a, that's a great answer. Uh, I wonder if my audio is now working and people can hear me. Yes, Katie, we can hear you. Excellent. Just before today's presentation, I was saying it's been great that we've had minimal technical issues. So, of course, this would happen during this one. I'm glad that I'm back online now. Uh, let's move on to a question about the phaser point project uh, that you mentioned, Barath. Um, the question is, is the system strength estimated by creating a change in operation point? How often is it estimated? And is that information used only to determine the control mode or does it feed into the controller parameters as well? Uh, the, the system strength actually is calculated for every sample which the PMU gives to the controller. Uh, so it's continuously calculated. Uh, uh, also, we can do uh, system changes in the model and uh, check whether whether our calculator uh, uh, system strength matches the real-time calculation of the phaser controller. Uh, as of now, I I'm not sure about uh, what is the sampling rate of the controller or the uh, PMU because in the, pro uh, the project is still in uh, development process. So more detail will be uh, disseminated once we are complete with this project. Yeah, and it's worth saying that these kind of points around sampling and filtering design are, again, areas of IP for a wide area control. So again, it's not the sort of detail that you're likely to be able to see or replicate in an open model. So again, we're using the hardware so that we can see how it interprets real information. And part of this study is not just to give it ideal conditions, but also to hit it with a hammer and disrupt the, the data coming in from physical PMUs so that you can see how the wide area control would interpret gaps in information or distortion. 
and to understand that in a, in a real context what it would be doing, how it would be estimating system fault level. But it's it's also doing a bit more than just looking at the fault level. It's also trying to understand relative levels of inertia on the network as well. So it's, it's actually quite a complex controller that's being developed and tested. Yeah, and as of now, we are using the system strength value just to change the mode. Uh, probably we will uh, uh, check in the future what what other purpose we can use those calculated system strength uh, uh, within the controller or within the whole wider system. Right. Thank you. We'll uh, we'll look forward to hearing more about that uh, the development of that controller. That sounds very interesting. Um, I'm going to move over to a question for Chun. Um, Chun, would you be able to elaborate on the Python load flow interface that you mentioned? Is the load flow from PSSE, and do you send those results to RTDS as the initial value of the simulation? You mentioned you're using real-time load flow data, so if you could give some more detail on how that uh, how that interface works, that would be great. Absolutely, Katie. I mean, uh, thanks for the question. Uh, definitely. Uh, the Python program, basically, we have a development internally, uh, basically acquires the uh, near real-time data from our central repository Pi data server, um, basically used for manual hydro's uh, operation purpose. And uh, that data basically will be acquired, uh, prepared, and uh, uh, intermittently will be uh, very validated as well as verified by PSC uh, before being used to uh, posture the actually the power flow uh, as well as the elements so for RTDS, but everything was done seamlessly using uh, Python and uh, external to the RTDS environments. So um, the RTDS uh, draft case itself will be uh, basically loaded to the Python program environments and uh, automatically override all these uh, different elements, uh, parameters as well as uh, topology as well as status. We have for uh, uh, we have uh, validated this uh, this process during the BIPO3 as well as the current project I'm leading uh, for the HVTC reduction controller and uh, the arrows on the uh, on the active power in comparison with the uh, with the field measurement was uh, within uh, I believe uh, one to three percent whereas the uh, reactive power is more challenging and typically resulting uh, five to eight percent uh, discrepancy but overall was uh, very effective. Excellent, thank you. Um, I'm gonna sort of combine a couple questions here and invite any of our presenters to comment on this. Um, there's a question about the vision at the HVDC Center with respect to future replica controls and whether you're promoting that those replicas be acquired with all new HVDC schemes. Um, and I think that there are definitely some, some perceived and real barriers to the adoption of replicas um, on a more widespread basis for HVDC, um, sometimes related to equipment cost or cost of the facility and the personnel. Um, and maybe that's related to grid code as well and how necessary these, these replicas are viewed as. So if we could get some comments on um, what those plans are and, and how you see those barriers being reduced in the future, that would be great. Mm. So this is very much an area of active work at the moment. Um, as many will be aware, uh, the GB system had a significant event last uh, August back in 2019 when uh, there was a very low frequency on the system as a result of a combined loss of generation, which was quite unexpected as a result of a line fault. And the detailed investigation of that event uh, identified a number of behaviours which were, were related to EMT phenomena. Uh, which were very difficult to model within uh, the, the data exchanges which happen today and some of the findings related to compliance processes um, on the commissioning of uh, more complex power electronic solutions and that drove a grid code review which is ongoing at present but does include within its initial recommendations that uh, the transmission owners and the electricity system operator would have the right to require uh, real-time models or replicas as required to manage those those events. Now, I guess the, the challenge, as you say, relates to the economics and practicalities of doing so, because 
it's not just a case of managing it during the project commissioning. These recommendations go much further than that and talk about performance during um, in-service uh, behavior, so after commissioning, and indeed a repeat compliance demonstration every five years, which again would infer relevant levels of ENT modeling as the networks change around connections. And so you need to keep these things live. Um, so you can, as we do with the Caithness Murray uh, replica, hold a replica which exactly reflects or what the converter is doing and allows us to reflect real conditions on it. But there's lots of other approaches that you could use. Uh, it's, it's really for a manufacturer to determine whether an appropriately complete model in RTDS, oh, sorry, in RSCAD could be complexity is that you go for a more streamlined uh, study uh, driven replica or uh, in, in a, a, an approach we've been working with vendors on uh, you have a, a reconfigurable replica where code can be more than one thing um, so depending on the simulation it may be representing a existing um, bipole connection or it may be representing a, a fax device, for example, um, or an, a, an earlier version of a monopole uh, converter. That, that approach is possible. Um, so de depending on which way people go, it could be a variety of answers. I guess we are less interested in what the answer needs to be for each project as making sure that the functional requirements of the solution are very clear. So everyone is delivering a product of the same quality that can be used across the same range of studies and we're not in a position where we have to ask for a different kind of replica at a later stage. Uncertainty is the big problem for any project so whilst you've got to keep the costs down I think you've just got to be very clear about what your requirements are and ensure then that they can be supported and uh, you know lots of project options exist so some options will be as you say capturing the code and then either changing it into a model or uploading it into a reconfigurable replica, but there may be the option for um, re replica controls to be procured at the same time as the projects. And it's really for a project to make that decision uh, rather than the center. The center just needs to be very clear and communicate that across the transmission owners and the ESO on what the requirement is. And then the projects themselves need to find a way of supporting that requirement. So I think we, we've got to the point of clarity on what the requirement is within the future grid code changes, uh, what now needs to happen is that uh, vendors and developers need to work out how best they support it. Um, as I say, ongoing developments there. Great, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ben, for those comments. Oh, go ahead. Sure, uh, I would just like to add a few points uh, from a manufacturer's perspective. I mean, um, the requirements, uh, the procurement of uh, BIPOL 3 control and uh, protection replica in addition uh, to, uh, well, that's a, was a valuable addition to the Mandu Bahaja real-time simulation, simulation center. And uh, while leveraging this uh, replica during the BIPO3 commis commissioning, we, we were able to basically uh, de-risk, I mean, any staged forwards uh, as well as, I mean, um, provides in-depth analysis uh, um, for any field commission uh, trap shooting process as well. So. Uh, has produced uh, basically substantial value. So going forward, Mandu Bajo has re uh, recognized the value of uh, hardware replica, and uh, we will be procuring replicas uh, for the uh, foreseeable BIPO 2 as well as BIPO 1 modernization project as part of uh, our Mandu Bajo real-time simulation center expansion project, as well as for any, <coughs> pardon me, any uh, special, uh, special design uh, protection schemes um, um, we are also looking at uh, uh, purchasing as also acquiring the vendors uh, replica uh, as a part of uh, our uh, fleet. And uh, so that's not only would, uh, would uh, assist uh, the efforts uh, in validating our internal model developments, um, which is a common practice within the Mandavajo, uh, that's we develop a, a granular model representation of the vendors and technology to the extent that's uh, based on our understanding. Uh, so, yes, the replica will definitely be an integral success to the Manu Bajos Real-Time Simulation Center uh, in the future. 
Excellent. Uh, thank you so much. It's great to hear from, from two perspectives on that. Um, as a final question before we wrap up, uh, Chun, you talked about uh, personnel being, you know, at the at the center of your success at Manitoba Hydro, um, and I know this is kind of an, an interesting point for people. I wonder if you'd talk a little bit about, you know, the level of expertise required to build up an effective uh, RSCAD case and to run, you know, effective HIL testing and what the team looks like. Do you have a, a large team of full-time simulation engineers and, and what does it look like from a, a personnel perspective? That's a great question. Uh, well, I, I think uh, typically this aspect can get uh, overlooked and but it's undeniably uh, the facts. I mean, uh, the people talents uh, of the people cap capital was the foundational uh, to the success uh, at least at, uh, at Emmanuel Baggio. Uh, real time similar center. I think this will uh, likely will definitely be resonated at uh, other success stories as well. Uh, so our team is uh, comprised of uh, very diverse uh, um, engineers, professional engineers with uh, with uh, highly uh, highly skilled expertise in different uh, in different area. In terms of the model developments, uh, uh, since the inception of Mandubajo's real time simulation, simulation center, we have uh, matured the expertise in terms of. Uh, RTS uh, model developments, and uh, even today, I've seen from the audience, uh, we have, uh, uh, I'm glad, I mean, uh, Don Menzies, I mean, uh, was on board as well, uh, uh, while Mr. Menzies has been, uh, has been uh, yes, uh, a significant contributor to our success, I mean, in terms of BIPO3 um, uh, commissioning as well as delivery. Um, and uh, we have a very dynamic team that we can tap off with their expertise, uh, depends on the um, depends on the value added application that we are uh, planning and uh, delivering. Um, so yes, um, again, the power system landscape is ever evolving. So uh, throughout uh, um, engagement uh, in engineering communities like today's session, and uh, we uh, aim and strive to basically keep abreast of the keep abreast of the latest developments as a trend. And uh, so yeah, uh, just all of these I mean, people talents ultimately contribute to the overall success of our stories. Excellent, thank you. I, uh, I think we have to wrap it up today at this point. So I just wanna reiterate our thanks to uh, to our three presenters, Ben, Barath, Chun. It's, uh, it's great to hear about your projects. I know this is a particular topic of interest for our audience. And uh, thank you so much for our audience. We have one week left after today. Thanks for standing by through our technical blips today. Uh, and a special thanks to Christine for taking over for the first part of the Q&A. If you're watching this on demand, you can feel free to continue submitting questions and we will answer those by email. And other than that, we will uh, hopefully see you next week. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.